now then, welcome back to another episode on the Hypermind server. But this time, it's Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved. Oh yes. And yes, I am wearing cactuses on my head. Yes. And the hat is called The Prick. Yes. I know. That's what it's called. But I'm shortly going to change to the welding helmet. Because I feel like a bit of a change. But I wanted to like show you that I don't take myself too seriously. Thank you very much. I'm sure you understand. Uh, <laughs> so now I've got this uh, welding helmet on. Full face mask. Because I'm about to get industrial. Yes. Industrial craft 2. As you may or may... Where am I? Go back. Go back into there. Thank you. As you, <laughs> as you may or may not know already... I am uh, thinking through a few things for a druid's tale as well as this series, right? And so I've been thinking of what I could do to keep these two series different enough so that it's um, fun and amusing. And what I've come up with is the... Oh, it's night time. Let's sleep first. I, who else is on? Me and Ballantyne. Okay. Valentine also progressing very well, apart from the fact that he was blown up by creepers, a group of creepers, and all that kind of stuff earlier. Uh, yeah, there was a... Uh, in yesterday's episode of A Druid's Tale, I put down that I was going to keep the two series running side by side, almost alternate days throughout the week, and that the Druid's Tale is going to be magic and farming, Whereas Hypermine was going to be tech and stuff and more tech and things. Well, now I'm here to clarify that. That the Hypermine server, Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved, is going to be the place where Nemson becomes an industrial tycoon. Yes. And I'm starting today, starting right now. I'm on the path, on the road to profit and... I don't care about the environment. I don't care about the world that I destroy in the name of gathering resources. I don't care about pollution and uh, hard luck stories from my fellow server members. I am just here to be um, an industrial leader. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to actually work out, but still. Uh, I'm going to found the first shopping mall. On the server over here and I'm gonna do that over in this section of the, uh, the village spawn village it's a right mess at the minute and nobody seems to be wanting to make the first move on doing something we've got some farms down there we've got some farms down there I showed you all this in the first episode there's villagers still trapped in places there's somebody put some stairs just to make it a little bit easier to get around but the roads and the walls and it's all part of the mountain it's all spawned in a bit weird isn't it right it's all spawned in a bit weird and there's something that i'm going to deal with and rectify and in doing so i am going to create myself a business a shopping center and i'm going to do it right about here right about here so first off let me just do this okay these two chunks, this one and this one, I am now claiming for Nemson's industry. I could technically claim Ballantyne's base while he's not looking because he's not claimed it himself. I could claim this entire area and he wouldn't be able to open chests and access any of his stuff or anything like that. I'm not quite that mean. We've got Ector over here and we've got Lone Wolf over there and I'm up there. I'm claiming this part of the spawn village area. So other people can also claim parts of the spawn village area. Ballantyne, if you're watching this, I would suggest that you claim your little section very quickly, sir. Very quickly before someone else does. Um, and yeah, industry-wise, I want to build a factory in these two chunks. Now, one thing I noticed when I was checking this out and figuring it all out and working it all out, looking at the place over and over again, up and down, thinking... How can we make this look cool? How can we make this work? Well, a ruddy great big factory right there would make it look awesome. And then sod the rest of it. Well, no, okay, not quite. That's not quite my intention. Um, I am intending on opening the shops. Yes, that is my intention. That is a, 
a big thing about it. And the way I saw this, look, the chunk border goes directly through half of this house over here and half of this house here as well. The chunk border runs straight down the middle of the roof, which means half of the house... Oh, restart in five minutes. Why again? The second time in a row. Never mind, never mind, don't worry. We'll get through this in five minutes and then I'll start doing something. Um, half of that house and half of this house are in the chunk. So this chunk, as you can see it here, up to the wall, all the way around here, up to into the house and half of the house, nobody's going to be able to touch break blocks, move blocks, access chests or anything, which is ideal for the shop side. Okay, and you'll see that later on when I get round to that part, but it's ideal for my plan to have half half of the shop is kind of behind the counter, only accessible by me, and the other half of the shop is in the public, as it were, and people can access things. Uh, the same with this one over here. Both are really, really badly genned in. Look, all the doors and everything are all blocked in and everything. So I'm going to clean all this out. I'm going to clean all this gravel out. Over on this side, I've kind of got one chunk border just on the edge of here. So there's one or two blocks. Is it two blocks? It's two blocks over outside of my chunk. I could claim this third chunk as well, but then that includes that bit of pathway and that bit of wall there and everything as well. And while I could reposition that path that tick uh, that one lone wolf uses, lone wolf he uh, he's over that area and he comes up this way. And he comes up there and he runs across the tops of the houses to get to the portals and stuff that he set up as well. So I may may expand and claim this as well. And then I've got the whole of this back end of the village in here. And there's nothing down here. There's nothing in this section. So it just needs a good clear out and a good sort out. And that's about it. Now, that being done. Okay. In fact, let's... Let's just claim that while I'm here. There. There we go. Let's just claim that while I'm here. Now, then, the next stage is uh, I want to be able to manipulate this area very quickly. So turtles will make short work of clearing it out and sorting it all out. I can build a big factory-type place down the back here and turn those two houses into shops. And maybe build a third shop or something close by. Maybe extend the shop slightly because I've got half the shop in the chunks that are protected and the other half is for public. Yes, you've established that. Yes, Nemson, you have established that. I'm getting a little bit of a, a lag on the server. I think that's because it's about to restart. I don't know. Maybe it's just connection issues. Um, there is something that I want to do first, though, this episode, before I start digging it all out between this episode and next episode and getting things set up. I want to start... Uh, hey, I got the Sticky Situation Award. Thank you. Uh, I want to start with Industrial Craft, because Industrial Craft and Applied Energistics 2, I have tried a few times to get that started in a series and actually like, work through the mods really successfully. And I can't say that I've really been very good at it. Uh, I've got started on it in the series, but I've never finished it in a series. Never got that far in it. I've never managed to get that far that I feel like I've done a good job on it. The series always ends. There was a Wanderlust with Ego. I did the Nemgo Wanderlust series way back. It's a playlist down in on the channel homepage. You can have a look and check it out. It was a lot of fun and I did start doing a lot of the things that I'm planning on doing now. Uh, then there was the Utopia where, where I had uh, a chance to play around on a mod pack that we were trying to create at the time. Uh, let's put them a little bit further apart. I hope for the best. Uh, and that was okay for a little while but I didn't really get around to playing with it enough to sort of warrant calling it complete and a success and all that kind of stuff. So I've decided, thank you, ender pearl dingy. I've decided that I'm going to make the most of it here and become a ruthless industrialist. And I'm going to build things that is going to uh, be basically selling items back to the server from spawn. Now, Obviously, every single player on the server 
is going to go out and do their own thing and make their own videos and be perfectly capable of making all the things that I can make and doing all the things I can do and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but some may want to actually use my shop as a thing. So, well, there goes the server. Be back in a minute. And of course, because the server has just restarted and it's a modded server, it has just taken a very long time. And I've completely forgotten what I was saying. I could have checked the footage, of course, but uh, I think I was building up to the fact I was coming over here. And Ballantyne proves it. Look, look at the jetpack on the back. Uh-huh. <laughs> the thing on my face, yes. Uh, let's see if I can do trading. Uh, trade with nearby players. Let's, let's offer him to trade. Let's see what happens. I've never done this before with hats, so I don't know. Uh, accept a trade. Yay! My hats. Let's see. I can trade him... I can trade him the hat that I'm wearing. No, I can't trade him the hat that I'm wearing. It's got a troll face hat. Okay. Uh, let's see. I haven't... Oh, where's the hat that I've actually got? Uh... Wizard hat for troll. Uh-huh. Waiting for both parties to be ready. Not ready to trade? Ready to trade. Ready to trade. There we go. I've clicked on ready to trade. Make the trade. Ha ha ha! Da da da! <laughs> okay, so now do I not have that one anymore? Now I've got the uh, the other one. The uh, clip on... Clip on Halo, no, that's not it. Box of Silence, no, that wasn't it. Uh, something like that. Troll, there we go. Done. <laughs> so now we have traded. Let's go like this, like F5, F5. Wait, wait. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so that's how trading hats works. I didn't know that's how trading hats works. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, but this also leads me on to a good point about the jetpacks. It's got a jetpack. People are getting... That's not the best place to be. That'll sort of put blood in there. Yeah, he's putting blood in there. <laughs> uh, jetpacks. Lots of people are already getting ability to fly. Now, jetpacks are cheap enough. Jetpacks are inexpensive. They require a bit of a charge and things like that. And... There is another way of making jetpacks, which Ector sorted out and kind of explained pretty well. Pretty dang well. Oh, he wants, he wants, to, he wants to chat. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will say something to him in a minute. Uh, Ector summed it up in his video yesterday. I think it was yesterday's video. Yeah, yesterday's video. Um, that There are a good few things. Where's the world gone? Give me the world. A uh, good few things that are available to players who want to fly like in a creative flying sort of sense and i want to think about that a little bit more he has started up i think i remember telling you last episode he was working on a wither skeleton farm and we got all that sorted together for a bit right so i'm thinking along those lines as well okay I'm not 100% sure whether I want to do it straight away because we've got these baubles. And in these baubles locations, it's very convenient to have some sort of creative flying ring or wings or something instead of having a backpack slot. But there is also packs, backpacks and jetpacks. There's uh, jetpacks in Industrial Craft 2. Now, the one you just saw Ballantyne wearing was a thermal expansion jetpack. And that's cool as well, and that's pr fairly easy to make. These low-level Industrial Craft 2 jetpacks are fairly easy to make as well. Hopefully I'll make one now. And uh, the next one up is okay, slightly more advanced, but I want to make through a few of them. There's a backpack. Backpack. This needs lots of stuff, so I'm just going to make the basic one today. And that's what I'm getting the rubber for. Yes, that's what it all comes down to. That's what I've been getting the rubber for. Rubber bars and stuff. And also the saplings of these rubber trees, so I can uh, plant a rubber tree. I do want the Industrial Craft 2 rubber trees a bit more, really, but still. We'll, we'll go with that for now. Alright, 
so what have I got in here? I've got a forge hammer. Uh, this is the Trado mat. I'll show you that later on. I was just testing to make sure it worked, and it does. That's what I'm going to use to be my industrial tycoon selling stuff. I'm going to use a trader mat. And uh, let me just say, uh, recording. Sorry. Uh, just set up things like there was another bit here, which was flatten some of these out to three, I think it is, and put a handle on it. I think it's something like this, and then like that. You had to make some cutters. <laughs> Valentine says, hi, YouTube. There you go. Uh, don't, don't forget, of course, to check out the description. I'm sure I've told you a dozen times already, but check out the description down below to find out all the things about people on the Reddit page and go and find out all the links and stuff. Valentine and Ektor have both released videos already and Lapis is currently doing uh, streaming and stuff as well. So it's worthwhile going and seeing what they're up to. Let's see, can I break this down? No, it's cutters, not that. I'm trying to remember how to do all of this. Okay, um, I've obviously forgotten that bit. I need some of these wires. It was a plate. Okay, it's a plate first. Get the plate and then cut the plate up into strips of copper cable. Yes, okay. And then I can put the copper and rubber together to make insulated cable. Okay, awesome. And how many do I need for this? I need six altogether and an iron plate. So I've got to work on that. Get six more of those. So... I don't know if I've got enough copper, to be honest. I'll see what we've got here. If I get two for each of those, okay. That's all right. I've got a spare. That's good. I'll keep the spares because I haven't got a good supply of copper right now. And I think this rubber bar can do it as well. Yes, it can. Awesome. Okay, so there's those six. And we'll have an iron plate there for that. And then what was the other bit? A bit of... Wait bit of redstone was it ah, I'm pressing the wrong buttons why does any I do that to me get off uh, redstone yeah and where did I put the redstone I had some bits and pieces ready I also wanted to go and place an enchantment table because I've got 31 levels so uh, get that sorted out today if possible Let's see about making this I'm sure I'm getting some achievements as well while I'm doing these sort of things which is cool and then I need, of these iron castings, I need two per plate. So let's get uh, one, two there and make four of those. I think that was right, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, with some redstone. And this is tin casting with a glass pane. A glass pane. Sure, I've got a glass pane somewhere over here. Let's see. Yes, I have. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do this. I haven't made an Industrial Craft 2 jetpack in ever so uh this is this is all first time stuff for me okay so there's three of those trying to remember recipes let's see i needed four tin plates so i probably only need to break two of those uh tin plates down again into four like that yes and then we're into that yes okay and then have i got what i need for this no i need to put those in there Put that in there. That was in there somewhere. Yeah. And then the plates were there and there and there and there. Yes, an empty jetpack. Awesome. So now I have an Industrial Craft 2 jetpack. Awesome. And it's supposed to give protection 8. So what armor did I get lost from there? I've got all, all but two bars there. And then I put this on, and I've got no armor protection on it whatsoever. I do now... <laughs> you can't see it because of my cape. You can only see the front of it. Oh, dang. Okay, well, there's something anyway. Uh, and then I need to do something like a generator to create some power. Uh, so, where are we going to go with the generator? I uh, just want a basic generator for now. Here we go. So we're going to need an RE battery which is some more tin, insulated tin with some rubber on. Okay, we'll make some of that quickly. There was the tin plate. Let's cut that up into strips and add some rubber to it. There we go. And let's do the third one as well. Why not? Because we're there doing it. 
Uh, lots of crafting. Yes, I know. And uh, this is iron plates around a furnace. Do I have the ability to make a furnace? Yes, I do. Okay, we'll go grab that lot, make a furnace, and some more iron plates. Uh, let's get all of that as iron plates for now. And that is that one. Uh, yep, there we go. We've got that. And let's put Jenner... Well, okay, there's so many different generators in it. <laughs> I've got to get so confused with all these different types of Industrial Craft 2. The last time I saw Industrial Craft 2, it was a shambles of a place to get all your stuff sorted out. Uh, four more tin castings. Okay, I've got some more tin. Was it just the one to make four? One to make two. Okay, so I'll do that twice. I want to get this all in an AE system at some point so I can just make the dang things from from like memory put that in there make an re battery very good and then like that and make a generator awesome i've made a generator i'm gonna put this over here for now uh possibly somewhere else in the future grab a stack of coal give me that stack of coal thank you put that into there and make it the energy now i don't know if I can just put that straight into here or whether I need to do a bat pack first. So let's see. No, I can't. So I'm gonna have to make a bat pack as well. A battery pack to take the power. Uh, this is all new to me. Yes. There'll be some episodes where this is brand new to me as well. But I'm gonna mess around with it. I'm gonna have some fun with it. I'm gonna make a ton more batteries and some more of that tin cable. So, give me a few minutes to make that up. I have got plenty of tin as well, so should be good to make it all up. And I'll make a little battery pack and just set it up so we can have our first flight. So, as you may have just figured out, this jetpack is not any good. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Uh, this is a IC2 biogas jetpack. And it can carry 30,000 biogas or miller buckets of biogas. I just picked the first jetpack and expected it to be like thermal expansion. You just build it and charge it. But no, I need the electrical jetpack, which is one of these. And for that, I need an advanced circuit and some glowstone there. Glowstone here, glowstone there. Electric circuits and all that kind of stuff is easy enough to make. I've made all of the ingredients now, but I did have to go to the nether to get the glowstone. And oh my days, the nether. Natura adds so much to the nether. It is silly. It is wacky, wacky do out there. There's all sorts of crazy things, but that is a whole nother story. What I've got here is a charge pad, and hopefully the charge pad is doing the job. Meh. Meh. Can I just put it, put this in there? And charge it up that way, yes. But why won't you charge me up? Um, it's not charging me up at all, is it? I thought that's what a charge pad did. I thought that's what a charge pad did. Oh, I have got a bit of I have got a bit of a jetpack now. Whee! And uh, the slow fall boots, the 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 long fall boots would do me good for that. At least I can still put that straight into a backpack for now. I'm not sure what the charge pad is. This is one of those derpy episodes where I'm not really sure what I'm getting myself into and I'm trying things out for the first time on camera for your amusements. So I'm going to be getting into IC2. Not exactly for the first time, but hopefully for the first time and potentially for the last time, I'm going to be doing some IC2 <laughs> and AE2 together. There are keys to make hover modes and stuff happen, but I'm not sure I know what they are. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, that's that section done. And did I still have this? Yes, I do. Okay, so the next thing. Oh my days. Look, I'm flying. Hey mum, look at me, I'm flying. And now I can float, hover, and fly. So now I've got a combined flight simulator, as it were. I've got the fall boot, so I if I fall down anywhere, it's all good. 
And uh, I've got the jetpack to give me the initial boost of speed to get me up there. And what else do we need to consider? I've, uh, yeah, I've got the hang glider to just sort of glide around. Which makes for an awesome thing. And I didn't use hardly anything to get me across here. And that's all I really wanted to do. Just get from base back to here very quickly. Now, before you go, as I've probably edited out all of the crafting and bits of nonsense and stuff that I've been doing this whole episode so far. Uh, as I've already done all that, then let me just get this sorted out for you as well. Why is this roof so full? Aha, here we go. Uh, there are zero villagers in here. Okay. And I want to take the bookshelves. I couldn't wait to get myself a Tinker's uh, Silk Touch. I just did it. All right. And shall I do it in here? There's a crafting table in here. Why not? Uh, yeah, I can do it in here. I, I don't know how much I'm going to get for this, but at least I, it's a start, right? Uh, let's see. Let's just make all of them into that. I really wish I had used uh, the bookshelves a lot better. But still, I can make more books. Let's get some of these. Boom. And some of that. There we go. All right, so make a few more books. Put those together. And uh, let's drop all that off. And shoot out here with the jetpack. Yes. Okay, and let's go. Now, last episode, I mentioned that Hector had sorted out a spawner. And since then, I told um, the lone wolf uh, that it was in here. And it looks like they've all sorted out a really cool uh, spawner slaying thing. It was his idea to put one of these in here so you could just punch them. And then you get all the stuff and things. And uh, there you go. And all the loot gets all sorted out by Ender.io. But the coolest thing here is the experience obelisk. Now, before I went into the nether to go and fetch the glowstone, I came in here and I basically deposited all my levels. I deposited all my experience in there so that I could get um, the levels back out when I wanted it. This is kind of an XP farm. So the experience from this is going into a hopper here. A vacuum hopper which will take the experience in and then t put the experience into that and then that's got some more experience see after i kill those so everyone's killing stuff over here so what i thought i would set up is a little enchanting table set up around the back here because obviously that's a thing that's needed as well isn't it when you've got the experience pool you get the uh, enchanting pool as well so i'm going to quickly and I mean very quickly, like literally before the end of this episode, I'm going to just quickly hollow out a few bits here. Just to make it so it's obvious to people that this is an experience farm area. Uh, I'm going to put down that and the bookshelves that I've made so far. Uh, yeah, some like that. And put that there and some like that. There we go. And two there. That's good. And two there. That'll be good. And I'll just fill that in like that. There we go. I may put some other shelves in here for people to store enchanted books and stuff. But, well, other people will get the idea and add to this as well. But now I should be able to put my new shovel, which is in this bag. I made a new shovel, a diamond shovel. Because I want to do some uh, work around town. Let's see. Efficiency 2? That's not too bad. Uh, more bookshelves, obviously, would be better. Um, but I want to do a bit of killing stuff around town, moving gravel and things around the place. So I figured, get an enchanted shovel, it'll make it better, because the the turtles will do large bulky areas for me. The turtles will do wonders. But when it comes to these sort of little areas like this, these detailed areas, I don't want the turtles coming along and just wrecking the village. So these sort of areas here that I'm going to have to clean out and sort out, I I just wanted a bit more of a speed boost to my digging. So I would get that enchanting done out of the way. So next up then, I've got to create the space that will be um, Nemson's Hypermarket. Yeah, Nemson's Hypermarket. That's what I'm going to call it. Nemson's Hypermarket. And I'm going to get all the like building around these areas and get the stairs and get the, the pathways through. Just to clear it out so that people can get to where they need to get to. To be able to buy my produce from the hypermarket. 
Yes! I'm clever. I called it Hypermarket, because this is Hypermine. Do you get it? Hope, uh, yeah, okay, you probably get it. It's probably not even funny. I'm probably just wasting my time when I should be saying thank you all very, very much for watching. And going into F5 mode with this crazy helmet on and saying thank you all very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Some episodes I know what I'm doing. Other episodes I'm experimenting with new funky stuff. I hope you enjoy them all the same throughout this Infinity Evolved series on the Hypermind server. Thanks for watching and goodbye.